Hi there, Allison here with another Capron du Jour. Today we are exploring Capron's versatility with the little bubbles. We're looking at the Langlois Chateau Crayon de la Loire Rosé. Now, uh, Crayon de la Loire is a traditional method sparkling wine appellation that was set up in 1975. And the quality standards were really modeled after champagne. So we're looking at exclusively hand harvested fruit, lower press yields, and then also longer lees aging in the bottle. The two main grapes for uh, Cano de Loire are Chenin Blanc for the whites and of course uh, Cabernet Franc for the reds. Um, Langlois Chateau was established by Edouard Langlois and Jean Chateau in 1885 in the appellation of Saumur. And in 1973, Maison Boulanger of Champagne, that's Bollinger for my Anglo friends, uh, came in and took a, a controlling interest in the demand. And this is significant because it really shaped the direction of the estate going forward in terms of both viticulture and winemaking. Today, the vineyards are all farmed organically. And in the cellar, there is a greater focus on a sort of vinifying individual fruit, grapes, I should say, and the specific vineyards uh, individually, and then doing sort of a final assemblage at the end. In the case of the rosé, uh, we are looking at two specific communes where the vineyards are, montreuil belly and puy notre dame and These are both in the southern part of the Saumur appellation. Uh, and the soils here are quite particular, so they have a higher concentration of the chalky tufo limestone as well as a bit of clay. And we know from, of course, Champagne and other high quality sparkling wine regions that that combination of limestone and clay is really critical for uh, producing fruit that is excellent quality for sparkling wine. So let's give this little rosé a taste. Now I should say that um, in terms of the fruit itself, uh, it's 70% Cabernet Franc and 30% Pinot Noir. And uh, it's spent 24 months on leaves as well. Now, the nose, is, the nose is very delicate, but it does have a beautiful sort of fruit basket profile. Like um, I'm getting a lot of sort of wild strawberry, the raspberry, there's even a little bit of like blood orange zest in there, I think. And in terms of the Cab Franc character, it does come through beautifully with this um, sort of underlying kind of rhubarb note uh, as well. I'm getting almost like a dried lavender. There's even a little bit of sort of rose petal kind of element to it, but it's very pretty. Um, it's very lifted and has this sort of delicate kind of nuance to it. Mm. The fruit is confirmed on the palate and it's supported by really crisp, refreshing acidity and a beautiful, fine, fine, creamy mousse. Um, which kind of rounds out the whole the whole experience. It's quite a harmonious wine in, in that way. Mm, just delicious. Um, I was thinking of pairings earlier when I was tasting this and um, it, it really lends itself, I think, to, uh, to breakfast. Uh, I, I, I see like a beautiful like Gravlox kind of platter with all the fixings and I think this would be spectacular uh, with with any sort of sort of brunchy kind of kind of meal. Um, do you have any favorite uh, Cab Franc sparkling wines? It's a category that I do want to explore a little bit more in detail so if you've got any hit me up in the comments below and I'll be back again soon with another wine. Cheers!